Welcome back, everyone. Great to have you here today on our Total Wellness Tuesday, where today we have an absolutely, and I should say another absolutely insane article and research uh, by Big Food. If you've heard me talk about this before, basically we have Big Pharma, the pharmaceutical industry, Big Food, Big agriculture, right? Big agra. That's basically all of the different farmland that raise or create like three or four monocrops and cows. We'll talk about that. And then there's big tech. These are the huge conglomerations that absolutely run our world. Now, positively, negatively, that's for you to decide. I'm not telling you what to think. But what I am saying is that the majority of the world is run by those three organizations. Big Tech's telling us what to think. Big Food is feeding us the three or four crops that they decide, corn, soy, um, agro-based cow meat, and a few other things. And then there is Big Pharma, which is the pill for every ill, and we'll be going over that on tomorrow's show as well. And I'll tell you this, I have no issue overall with some of the things that those things are doing. I love being able to get online and research and do all those things. Love that. Love being able to provide food to, well, we could provide food to every single person in the world. We just essentially choose not to. I don't love how they're going about it, but I, I love the idea of that. And then in terms of pharmaceuticals, well, I am glad that we're able to cure a lot of issues that weren't able to be cured in the past. And by cured, I mean like acute-based illnesses that would lead to immediate death. I'm not talking about the chronic-based illnesses that these pharmaceuticals have also created as well in their frame of mind thinking. But again, we'll save that more for tomorrow's show. Today, though, is all about big food, which, uh, if you haven't guessed by the uh, title of the show is Why Cows Eat Skittles, uh, is the insane things that they do in order to produce food the cheapest way possible with absolutely no regard for the end user's health. And by the way, that is all of us. So what I want to share with you here today seems like it should be illegal. It seems like it shouldn't even be true, but yet it is. Now, nobody even knew about this until the story broke about five years ago. I'm bringing it to you today, about five years later, because people still don't even know that this exists. And I'm gonna link up a couple other shows here today on all of the reasons why cow's milk and big agra and you know non-grass-fed, non-small farming is really unhealthy for your body. Going back to bovo bovine growth hormone, recumbent bovine growth hormone, uh, estrogen, antibiotics, and so much fed to cows. But the interesting thing is that I'm gonna be sharing with you today, and again, this just broke uh, just a few years back with a CNN-based story, and the only reason why this came about was because an entire truckload of Skittles spilled mysteriously on a Wisconsin road, and the residents there were wondering why are there millions or hundreds of thousands of Skittles all over the road. So what I want to do is actually share with you the explanation as to why they gave and now why they are feeding cows hundreds of thousands to millions of Skittles. It's millions of Skittles every single year. And then we're going to give the cow's perspective as well. So this should be a fun one here today. I'm going to share with you uh, exactly, again, what was written, and then we'll give you the wrap-up at the end as well. So I'm going to link this up. This is directly from the Newsweek-based article. And uh, again, this is... Uh, I, don't, I won't use the pun, but maybe I have to, but we'll actually share with you exactly what the uh, farmers were saying as well. So again, this is Newsweek. You can find it at stephencabral.com forward slash 2433, stephencabral.com forward slash 2433 if you actually want the article and you would like to post about it as well. All right. So this was covered, as I said, in 2017, and the story broke uh, when... The news agencies were alerted when hundreds of thousands of Skittles were uh, spilled all over the road. And in this case, red Skittles specifically, because I'm sure you're probably wondering, what is a cow's favorite color of Skittle? Well, apparently it is red. So uh, this led to then a big back and forth with farmers. Why were they having all this delivered? So what they found was that farmers had been substituting corn 
when corn prices had begun to skyrocket, meaning they were looking for cheaper alternatives for grain. Uh, you can look at corn however you would like, uh, and they had to find a different calorie in order to be able to substitute for that. So let me give you now the direct quote. Unsurprisingly, news of animals eating candy left people unsure on the practice, but experts remain adamant that all is good when it comes to cows and candy. Let's just take just a moment just to understand that what would a cow naturally eat in nature? Well, it would be grazing on fields all day. So it'd mainly be eating grass and any types of weeds and maybe some twigs in there and some different types of bugs that may be in the grass. And that's about it. I mean, that is what cows eat. Now, if you look at that, okay, well, they are not then eating corn or soy or Skittles or the remains of other animals, which is what they're currently fed today. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, the actual professor of animal nutrition at the University of Tennessee said it keeps fat material from going out in landfill and it's always good, uh, always a good way to get nutrients into these cattle. The alternative would be to put the candy in a landfill somewhere. Okay, so this was literally his quote saying that, and this is a professor of animal nutrition, okay, at the University of Tennessee, John Waller. And basically what they said is, the candy is going to go to waste. And since it's going to go to waste, we may as well feed it to something that won't complain. If not, it's just going to be thrown out. Okay, I'm not sure that that seems like the right thing to do. And all of this, he said, well, um, it's a good way to get nutrients to the cattle. And I said, okay, that's interesting. So it's a good way to get nutrients to the cattle. Well, let's actually look then, what are the nutrients in Skittles? Okay, I want to just share with you exactly what they are from the website, Mars Own Skittles. And it's sugar, that's the first one, corn syrup, partially hydrogenated soybean oil, fruit juice from concentrate, grape, strawberry, lemon, lime, orange, and then there's citric acid, dextrin, artificial flavors, gelatin, probably made from other cows, food starch modified, that's GMO, by the way, G GMO starch, coloring, which include these paints, yellow six lake, red 40 lake, Yellow 5 Lake, Blue 2 Lake, Blue 1 Lake, Yellow 5, Red 40, Yellow 6, Blue 1, and Ascorbic Acid. Now, before you say, well, there's a, there's a nutrient there called Ascorbic Acid, just want to stop and pull you back. The only reason there's a tiny amount of Ascorbic Acid in Skittles is not to get you vitamin C. It's to be used as a natural preservative, right? Like that, that's it. Okay. So, and just keep in mind, bovine or, or cows do not need to take in vitamin C. They're, they make it endogenously. The only animals that don't make their vitamin C uh, internally, endogenously, are guinea pigs, gorillas, chimpanzees, and other primates, like humans. That's it. So most things already get their vitamin C. So we can't use that. And hopefully the professor of nutrition you know, knew that. So really, what are we talking about? They're getting sugar, and they're getting some fat with the soybean oil. Okay. So... Why can't the cows then, if they really want to just feed them cheap product, why don't they just give them sugar? Like literally, they could just give them sugar, which is cheaper than making it into then Skittles. Obviously, there's a lot more to it because these animals certainly don't need all of that paint in their diet, right? I just named five, right? Or, or no, even more than that. Yellow six, red 40, yellow five, blue two, blue one, yellow five, red 40, yellow six, blue one. That is nine different types of paint. And when you see food dye, make no mistake about it, that's paint. Those are paint colors. When you hear the lake at the end of it, that is the color group. That's what they're using it for. These are not things like, oh, it's colored with beets or turmeric or spirulina. No, it has nothing to do with that. These are actually synthetic paint that is on the food that they feed to humans as well. So now keep in mind, all of these people now with this whole movement about eating beef liver, right? Or beef or organs, heart, kidney, et cetera. I'm not against that, okay? Eating it every day, that would never happen. That's not primal. That's nowhere near primal. That is not even human whatsoever, okay? But here's the thing. You're eating now 
the organs, which retain a lot of these toxins, especially if we're talking about kidneys and liver, of these sick animals that have been fed paint. And those are the filters, okay? So if you're watching this on video, I'm holding up my buddy Walter here. This liver filters your blood. Guess what it's filtering? The paint, right? Behind here are your kidneys, filtering the same way. Does most of it then hopefully get excreted? Yes. Does all of it? No. And that's, again, you can, that's scientifically proven. And it's also in their fat. So if you were to actually look at the adipose tissue, the fat of a human or a cow, you would see a lot of these stored toxins. This is why it's been uh, stated over and over, the human fat, and again, this can go for animals as well, it was over 300 times more toxic. That means 300 times more toxins in it level of than in the human blood because it needs to be stored somewhere, not in the actual blood. So I ask you this, you know, if we look at it, we are what we eat and assimilate. So if we're looking at this, we are eating diseased cows that are fed foods they would never find in nature that create massive amounts of inflammation. And it's not like the food industry doesn't know this. Now, do, do the farmers or the people that are selling this feed to? Because this is how it actually works. So what happens is they bring the Skittles to a big plant and the plant combines the corn and the soy and the other things with the Skittles and into basically cubes that the cows then eat, right? And so they said, oh, well, the cows like it. This was another part of the article. The cows like it because it gives them energy. Okay, you're feeding them sugar, right? You're feeding them glucose. But why are you really doing that? Are you doing them for them to have energy? No, because there's like 10,000 cattle on one farm and they're all, you know, living in their own filth. So what they're really doing is they're giving them massive amounts of sugar because it's an easy way to get calories. It's an easier way to make them then grow and put on more weight, namely fat, so they can sell more weight, which is how they're selling it by the volume, by the, the actual poundage to then the end uh, supermarket and consumer. So like, let's not talk about any, you know, benevolence here towards the cows. No, no, no. If cows had their way, they would be grazing in fields, eating grass uh, and being able to get good access to sunlight and water. That, that is their day, right? And so like, let's not pretend that they're doing this for the cows. But the real issue is even beyond the cows is the humans. What about the humans and their health? Because in no way, shape, or form can we possibly believe that a cow eating corn, soy, Skittles mixed with antibiotics, and if you haven't listened to one of my previous shows, 50% or more of all antibiotics in the United States are fed to cattle, are fed to animals, okay? And they are fed this because the diets that they are given would make them sick and diseased, and especially the conditions they live in. So... Am I telling you that you should never eat, you know, cow meat or any of these things again? You have to keep in mind, they're doing this for everything. This was one example. Fish are swimming in plastic pools that they are raising, that they are fed feces and Skittles and other things as well, soy, corn, and they're not even in big filtration-based plants. Chickens, they're having their beaks removed, they're having their claws removed, and they are literally shoulder to shoulder inside massive concentrated uh, feeding units, okay? So it, it is, it, at some point, we have to say, this is not okay. Even if you don't care about the animals-based condition, it's not okay for you to be eating these inflammatory foods. And that's why we have to be really careful with these all meat based diets, because if you're not getting that meat from grass-fed, grass-finished sources and combining that with some other antioxidant-based food, it's a recipe for disaster. Now, the problem is it's not a recipe for disaster in the next few weeks or months or maybe even years. It is as it begins to build up, then it's completely detrimental to the human body because this inflammation and arachidonic acid over time builds up in the body begins to produce things like greater amounts of prostaglandin series two, and you get all sorts of inflammatory-based issues, which then allows the, for the genetic expression of whatever disease you might be predisposed to. So again, I share this with you here today 
because I just don't know, and I've, I've been to quite a number of farms, but I've never had, I've never heard cows ask for Skittles, you know, specifically by brand name. I've never heard them say that red is their favorite color Skittle. And, uh, and I think a lot of this, again, they try to spin it as something like this is good for the cows with these nutrients, or this is somehow good for the industry, or we're not creating waste. You know, why don't not do this in the first place, right? Like, why not? Uh, make all of these foods that are just completely harmful to humans. And why brush it off is that it's no big deal. It is a big deal. When you feed humans hydrogenated fats and oils, you combine it with sugar and then additional toxins like paint, well, why do you think we have so many of these detrimental chronic-based disease? So I wanted to share this with you today. Again, we have to get to know our local farmers to a greater degree. We have to maybe eat a little bit less of these things that might cost a little bit more, but do they really cost more? I don't know. I don't think that we can say that, especially when from maybe 40 years old and beyond, there's so many dollars spent on doctor's base bills. And so hopefully this was helpful. Do feel free to share it with anyone you think it would serve. And if you want to find this article, the original one, you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash 2433, and I'd be happy to link it up there. Take care, everybody. 